Then we back to 76 for a bit. It's kind of an interesting case study in people coming up with the community even when the means weren't there. Like, even during the worst of the early release period, where it seemed like the game was just falling apart at the seams, people were genuinely trying to make that game fun. Like, there were stories about people signing in and behaving like NPCs and interacting with other players in ways that made it seem more like a normal Bethesda game. I respect the willingness of people to go the extra mile to try and draw fun out of something that is otherwise not very well equipped for it. Honestly, I don't even know what the... It's been a while since I have followed a lot of critical reviews. Like, I know there are some people that are still kind of in the game. There are still outlets that are still doing their thing. With a reasonable degree of effort. But it does feel like both the game's industry and the... Information about the game's industry is in kind of a weird place right now. Like, there was, uh... Like, I still follow a couple of the old, uh... Giant Bomb alumni, like... Jeff Gerstmann, Alex Navarro, Vinny Calavera, and such. And it's kind of interesting to see where they went. Because a lot of them are old guard journalists that actually did, you know... Oh, shit! Oh, no, 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 no. That, you know, cut their teeth on E3 of the late 90s, early aughts, when the show went, had a lot going on. And seeing what they're doing now, and what they're trying to... What space they're trying to see for themselves. What I see is a lot of... Journalists who once worked for an outlet trying to make space for themselves independently to mixed results. I don't know, like flashy combat games and sexy women. Well, you know, very. What else do you need when it it comes to making a successful game? Apparently, a lot more. Okay, it's got to be way up. Oh, I think I gotta take a Tengu up. I see. You. Thank you. Fuck you, people on the ground. I feel like I was up here. There's some festival space. Yeah, yeah, here. Oh. It's alright. Just non creepily sneak up on these Japanese schoolgirls. Totally legit here. <coughs> ah. Yeah, kind of the same way, friend. When it comes to something I don't have a lot of personal knowledge about. I'll try to be passively aware of the conversation around it. But always take it with a grain of salt that there could be something I'm missing. But also take with a grain of salt other people's opinions, because very often you can get someone that has a radically different experience with a thing that doesn't necessarily form a complete picture. So it is always wise to keep an open mind, but also understand that a person's point of view is a single data point. Now, it's the consistency that is useful. It's kind of like how individual scores aren't necessarily useful, but I do find them useful in aggregate because they because reflect... Oh. Okay, so you're not an... Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh... No, I think she jumped, Akito. She, 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 she fucking jumped. Uh shit. Oh damn it, we had a ghost vision there. Damn it. Okay, back up. Yoink. Alright, back over here. Okay, so right. Yeah, it reminded me a little bit of the first Fatal Frame, where one of the ghosts... Oh. Oh, she's going across that way. Okay. 
Well, now wait a sec. If she jumped, what did she land on, and why is she walking across the sky there? Oh, I call shenanigans. We're not dealing with a ghost. This is clearly someone's superhero origin story. Oh, frick! Ah, oh, these things. You know what? Hold on a second. Let's fuck him up, KK. Oh, yeah. So I didn't mean to interrupt you hanging out here. <laughs> Well, that's kind of a common depiction with ghosts, isn't it? Where they kind of... relive their last moments, but in some kind of twisted way that makes them a problem for the living. Like, again, I remember there was an issue with uh, the first Fatal Frame, where the broken neck ghosts, the first time you encounter her, you actually see her jumping off the roof and landing in front of you, and then the actual... Like, it's a scripted encounter, but then the actual enemy appears that you fight. And that kind of informs what you're facing, whereas if you just saw her, she'd just be a weird ghost with a broken neck. But that glimpse of what happened to her beforehand gives you an idea of how she got where she is. And it's a remarkably concise bit of storytelling. That's the thing. It kind of depends on what flavor of ghost you are, and if you even are cognizant of the fact that you are a ghost. Which, in this case, it seems to vary. It seems like a lot of the side quest ghosts we've been talking to are broadly aware of what's happened to them. But the visitors reflect something else entirely. Less a specific person, and more... They remind me a little bit of the Malefactors from the Suffering series, which are indicative of... Okay, voice recorder. Oh, hey, I see that. That's a Tanuki. They're indicative of a means of execution or death and not any particular individual. Kind of interesting, actually. Stan Winston did the design for that. It was pretty well done. Anyway. Uh, that is correct. It's, like it's, it's an interesting case where... The sequels are directly tied to each other, and it actually is a rare case of a console game having kind of a sort of save import feature based on what happened in the previous game. I'll explain it in a second after I listen to this. Alright, what do we got here? Alright. Ed, what do you got for us? Okay. ここにもエリカはいなかったよ。悪いがそろそろ仕事着だ。僕らは渋谷を離れる。僕とデイルは生き残らないといけない。そういう計画だからね。君とエリカはまるで血の繋がった姉妹か親子のようだった。僕みた
whether you were good, bad, or neutral affected the ending and both the circumstances for why the main character, Torque, was in prison. Like, you were in prison because you had killed your wife and family, and in the good ending, it was implied that you were framed. In the bad ending, it was implied that a monstrous side of you took over and did it. Neutral was kind of somewhere in between, where you're a relatively normal person that just had kind of violent tendencies. And the second game, Ties That Bind, actually wrote itself around this. And it builds off the whether you got the good, bad, or neutral ending, and then affected the flavor of the good, bad, and neutral ending of that game. It was really interestingly done. I think it did take some narrative steps that were kind of a mistake. But as you say, they were ambitious games, and I respect what they tried to do with them. I do still think the first one, first one broadly holds up. It's a good bit of action horror that has more going on than your standard action game. Anyway, uh, let's tag in with Rinko, and then we'll head to the garage. Where are you? Uh, oh, she's over this way. Box. Is there a fast travel there? There was not. Yeah, there was a surprisingly good writing buried within the suffering games that isn't necessarily reflected in the actual plot of them but does indicate some interesting things like the between mission <laughs> journals are all written from this one, the perspective of this one prisoner Rance Truman and it's kind of indicative of the broader conditions of the prison that affect everybody in there, and the history of the island they take place on, Carnate Island. Like, there's this one sequence where you're going into this old military base, because the island was a World War II fortification at one point, and the lead-up is talking about a series of unjustified executions that were of German-American servicemen, who nonetheless were suspected of being Nazi sympathizers, and by all accounts they were innocent, but the commander didn't care. And the intro text is something along the lines of... The evil in this place claims everyone, but still, I think the colonel honestly believed in the evil he did. And it kind of gives an interesting window into a character that is not relevant to the story, and we never see, and is long dead by the time of it, but nonetheless had a significant impact because he created some of the evil that you're now dealing with. One of the monsters is directly created by the execution that was carried out there. And I'm always kind of on the lookout for stuff like that in games. Where there's always someone that has a vision. And it's interesting seeing where that vision has to compromise with game design. Yeah. I forget who. Someone once said that every book written is the death of a perfect idea, and I think that applies very much to game design as well. That once you start having to code things, you start having to make compromises, and it's a question of where your original vision can still hold while you're making a thing that people can play. Oh, I absolutely played Undying. That game is fantastic. That one absolutely holds up. Both as a shooter and as just kind of a creepy horror setting that has action in it. Also with some timeless Irish accents. So I'm actually legit good. Interesting. Yeah, they clearly set it up for a sequel that they weren't in any position to execute on, which is a shame. Alright, so Erika still thought she could reach her dad, Luke Skywalker style, and probably was not as successful about it, go figure. Yeah, I think that's fair. Better to be a good game with unrealized sequel potential than a ga a bad game to begin with. But yeah, that's another game where it's interesting digging into it and seeing 
what is their where the writing had to make contact with the gameplay and which buckled. Because there's a lot of supplemental writing that delves into the characters in interesting ways. Like, I think there is actually a... I, I might still have this. There's a supplemental journal that has some of the... It, it, it's either from Jeremiah's perspective about the Covenant siblings, or it's from the perspective of the Covenant si siblings. and talks a bit more about the backstory and about things they couldn't feature in the game. But it's also kind of interesting exploring that in a gameplay sense, because like all other Unreal Engine games, it's very easy... Okay, so we got another Rinko quest here. It's very easy to bust out console commands and mess around with it. Like, one of my favorite things to do is summon enemy creatures and poke at how their behavior works. And there's one unique sequence where you're attacked by a bunch of ghost monks that can only be hurt at the time by one of your spells. It's very early in the game, one of the, you only have your revolver and the uh, ectoplasm spell, and only the ectoplasm spell can reliably hurt the ghosts. Or that and the ether traps, which you get a limited supply of, and they have a better use later anyway. But if you summon them and lure them into other enemies and encourage like a crossfire situation, they will attack those other enemies and they can damage each other because because of the way the damage is coded. They don't have any special conditions like the player game does, like the player's arsenal does. Yeah, the game implies there's much more back, backstory than what's shown. Because yeah, the implication is that what you saw at the very end was just one doorway of many. And you know, obviously, uh, uh, what's his face, Kaisinger. He's still out there doing his thing. And the writing of the game implies that there are other mystics out there as well that are doing tangentially related spiritual stuff. And I think it's a good example of a game that you ultimately solve the core dilemmas in front of you, but still implies that there is more out there to deal with. Yeah, they aren't strictly speaking necessary because the only one you have to, the only thing you really have to use them on is getting uh, that one Covenant sibling out of your face. I can't remember his name. He's very Hellraiser inspired, and at a certain point, he hunts you down in his ghost form, and he's not really vulnerable to anything else. But you fight him properly later on, and they're not needed there. <laughs> I used to be good at remembering stuff, but yeah. Still a very good game. No, you're up here. Oh, wait. There's a uh, shrine right here. Why not? <laughs> well, I think an important, a important element of a good action game is the grace period it gives a player to adjust. More on that in a second. Let's take this call. Okay, so it's looking like Erica did try to pull a Luke Skywalker, except she failed. <laughs> pizza, pizza. God, if only. Oh god, there was a sequel to Rune, wasn't there? I only played the first one. I remember liking it, I don't know how it's pulled up now. Alright. KK, where you leading me, bro? Just down the street, huh? Alright. Try to gluten free pizza cauliflower crust. You know what? I've had one of those with uh, cauliflower crust. They're actually pretty good. I want to learn how to fight, huh? Oh, hang on a second. Kitty! Kitty, kitty! Friendly smell coming from those lit-up box thingies. Who cares about that? I want to give you scritchies. Come on, kitty. I must pet the void. Damnation! Alright, sorry game, that's a point off. I don't make the rules. Yeah. 
Yeah, good luck getting it to run on a modern machine. Yeah, no kidding. It, it really does feel like turn-of-the-century games are harder to get working nowadays than anything else. Even stuff from, like, 2005 or later. Like, I've talked about this before, but Max Payne 2 worked reasonably well when I last installed and played it. Whereas Max Payne 1, the physics of it straight up were busted when I tried playing the Steam version. And yeah, there's Dragon Age, which is its own other ball of wax. Which, you know... Again, the last time I played it, I remember it working decently, but there were definitely issues where it was starting to show its age. And it definitely didn't work terribly well on streaming. High issues, head issues when I had a high mountain gluten. They have a threshold to get a watch for. Alright. Honestly, there's some good gluten-free options out there. Without getting into too many specifics, my sister's been switching to some gluten-free stuff as well. When we go out to California, we usually get introduced to some variant of thing we liked, but now gluten-free. And most of the time, I actually quite like it. Follow Erica's psychic trail. Okay, so this way. Alright. Yeah, that game deserves some effort to preserve it that I'm worried it's not going to get. I remember when there was talk of some developer, or uh, some third party planning on re-releasing it, and even had like promotional materials for doing it, but at some, but at some point lost the rights to do so for unknown reasons. And around then, some site had like a downloadable executable that was the original game, and just saying. Literally just telling people, download this fucking thing, we don't know if it's just going to be lost to history or whatever. Yeah, Lith Tech 1 was basically just loosely held together with tried out tears. Yeah, it, it's amazing that stuff made with it works as well as it did, let's put it that way. Okay, what do we got? Oh, it's a little cat statue. Or a cat, cat keychain or something. Maybe Erica ended up as the ghost from Seven Nights Ghost. Oh. Yeah, I'm using worked in air quotes here. If it launched without throwing up a few error messages, you were lucky. Oh, we're talking Lith Tech 1 specifically, yeah. Actually, I think I remember how it works now. Maybe not. Let's one was so bad that collisions for projectiles didn't work. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I, re I do remember the horror stories. They are somewhat lost to the mist of time, but... God save anyone that had a program for that thing. Program for it, or... W program it, or program with it. Much less people that tried to play it. Actually, I'm gonna take one quick look here. Wind elemental charge rush. Here we go. Q, that's it. Alright. This is my submachine gun. Right. Fastest finger guns in the east. Such classics as bad video game design as Shogo and Blood 2. <laughs> oh boy. Oh man. I am glad that I only experienced Blood 2 second hand and did not attempt to play it myself. I'm firmly convinced that someone died trying to make that thing work. 
Exactly. Billy the kid with a minigun. Tangential, but it fucks with me that the VA for Billy the Kid and Fake Go also voices uh, Drake. She's got range. Yeah, that checks out. みんなのために戦いたいってな。私はそれを理解してやれなかったのか。バカだな。悔いが残るよ。リンコ。リンコ。誰の声？エリコ。リンコは何も間違ってないから、ありがとう。私のこと守ってくれて。Akira was like, eh, I have nothing to add to this conversation. I'm hanging up. Yeah, Shogo is interesting given what they tried to do with that game, and they tried to make a combination of on foot and in mech sequences. <laughs> and tried to deal a much more expansive story than it was really equipped for, or indeed the engine was really good at doing. Again, it's a case where someone had a vision, but that vision was hamstrung by the technology even more so than usual. Anyway, uh... We'll head over here and pump the bike full of magic go juice. Oop, drink time, huh? Don't mind if I do. Oh, thank you, sir. Oh, sweet lady, caffeine. Get me going through one more stream. What do we got here? Let me get this straight. You don't want to come out to Shibuya today because a fortune teller told you not to? Come on, seriously? I don't know. They might well have known what they were talking about. Oop, hang on a second. Cannot do this because it's not ready. God damn it. I want my Gachapon toy now! I need to see if I'm my own action figure. Alright, let's see where this goes. Are we going to get an Akira power slide out of this thing? If <laughs> everyone in Japan just permanently leaves their phone unlocked just in case they get ghost storied and some random paranormal investigator person can read through their messages. Yeah, no kidding! That is some really... That set that is a really long lasting screen setting there. Anyway, object corruption research notes. Throughout the world there have been always been objects that people claim to bring misfortune to their olders. They call them cursed or corrupted, but scientifically speaking, what sort of changes are actually taking place inside them? This is a subject that I find to be of deep interest. It's easier than you'd expect to come across these things, these kinds of objects in day to day life. It didn't take much digging at all to find something that immediately sparked my interest. I'd love to research it, but I'm not too keen to test my luck buying it myself. I think I'll send KK instead. If it turns out something is actually wrong with the thing, I'm sure he can handle it. Hmm. Warframe is adding bikes as the newest vehicle. Hard to say we'll get to use them outside the new game mode. Yeah, fair enough. That game has some fucking style to it. Anyway, I have spiritual powers. If there are things troubling you that you can't see, I can help. Call me anytime. Confidentially gar confidentiality guaranteed. Rapid pesting class exorcisms. <laughs> I think Erica was trying to go into business. We are ready to believe you. Yeah, is there anything else readable here? It doesn't look like it. Hmm. Alright, let's cash in here. Spend some points. Juice of the bike. And see where it takes us. Uh, we doing skills wise? Ooh, a longer glide. You know what? Why not? That's always worth a grab. All right, let's motor. Oh, hi, Celine. <laughs> oh, Celine's a good kitty. Showing off the bike design and a few other things. Nice, nice. I forgot we were putting on the suit. We riding in style tonight. 
Then we're gonna go home and get ready for our insurance sales job or something. Alright. Oh shit, here we go. If you have unfinished business, you'll still be able to come back to Shibuya via fast travel, but the following side missions will become unavailable. After the end, 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so that is the quest line we just did with Rinko. So this is kind of a make sure you've got all your stuff finished thing. So we'll hold off on that for now. Yeah. Probably not recommend going on a suit and a bike. Yeah, no kidding. Anyway, what else do we have in terms of side quests? We've got this here, we've got this here. There's a Tory Gate down here and here. We're actually pretty good as far as coverage goes. There's not a lot of the city to unveil that we haven't already unveiled. There is a Giselle statue there. And just taking a sweep here. Yeah, here's what we'll do. We will tag the quests here, here, uh, grab these two shrines there, tag the quests there, there, then we'll get on the bike. We will take a quick break, and we'll grab a refill, get some exercise in, then we will do a circular route to tidy up some last minute stuff before hopping on the bike and seeing where it takes us. Anyway, first, time for crunches. Let's get back to it. So yeah, we're going to want to tackle some last minute things here before we do what might be a point of no return. They did say we could get back, but some things will inevitably be cut off. But yeah, good to see you Vegeta, Vegeta good to see you whatever name. Hope everything else is, hope everything is going well with y'all tonight. Uh, right, statue is up here. Grab the snack that's been sitting out for several hours now. Hey, water upgrade. There's a ton of those that I haven't actually got, which makes me surprised that we're... Oh, damn it. Surprised that we're ending this where we are. I mean, you know, I don't think this is the end game. I think this is pre-end game before things get truly apocalyptic, but they're letting me know that some things will be cut off if we don't finish them first. Yes, that's right. We're going to head down here, deal with that side quest. I thought there was one more in the ballpark. It's a little cluttered with the fact that things you've cleared are on there. Okay, yeah, there are two down there. Well, let's go see what other ghostly denizens of Shibuya need our help with. Whee! All right. Hey, bro. Kido and KK services. What you need? Uh, of course. Things on the fourth floor. Yeah, there's a common... It, it, it's... It, the number four in Japanese has two readings, and one of them is kind of synonymous with death. And supposedly you do, you do have some buildings that straight out avoided uh, having a fourth floor because of this. Less of an issue nowadays, but I think some older buildings still have stuff like this. And you actually saw it in... So you actually s still see this in some Japanese media. Like, there's a famous bit from the first Silent Hill game, which I actually quite like, where you go to the hospital in the normal world, and you search the floors one by one, all the doors are locked. Homophonic, that's it, yeah. Yeah, it it's shares the pronunciation or something like that. But yeah, in the first Silent Hill game, you go to the hospital, there's like three floors, you go to them one by one, and then nothing shows up, but when you get to the elevator, a fourth floor button has mysteriously appeared. 
and when you get off the floor there, things start to go to the... Things gradually progress to the other world, and things get gradually more intense. And it's honestly really well done. The soundtrack gradually layers on um, instruments, and becomes this... Goes from this creepy ambient droning... Okay, one... Oh, yep. There we go. You okay? Yeah, it goes from like this creepy ambient noise, then layers on this like tapping drum sound, and then becomes this straight up industrial pounding that's kind of cacophonous before you actually start getting attacked. And it's just a brilliant transit, a transition to the other world, and one of the standout moments in that game. Anyway, I'm just going to keep the picture here for now so I can admire it. It just disturbed my family if I brought it home anyway. This way I can gaze upon her for as long as I want. All the little troubles of life just seem to melt away when I do. One of these one of these days I'm going to sell this hotel and travel with her. I guess I fell asleep. I fell asleep. Strangely, there's no door anymore. All I can see now are walls. What's going on? I can't get out of here. Oh well. At least I'm in here. At least while I'm in here, I can be alone with her. Maybe I'll just stay here forever. Uh huh. So we have a cursed picture. Oh, cursed picture. That would do it. Hmm. Okay, artist Utamo Kitagawa. Huh. Fascinating. Wonder if they knew. Wonder if they knew Katsushi Katsushika Hokusai. I always stumble over the stumble over the full name. I can't talk tonight. I need another drink. Yeah, I think anything weird in this game you can blame on Yokai. Alright, nice and easy. We didn't even have to blast anyone. A rare treat. Alright, on to the next uh, thing on our to do list. My god, we will have this city straightened out of all supernatural activity if it kills us. Hey, eyes, good to see you. How's it going tonight? Uh, right, down the street to the right. Go. This looks familiar. Bathhouse. Yeah, we were here before. There's a working gacha machine. You know what? I'll buy from that first. Why not? Running a tavern with Tiff. It's pure chaos. Oh boy. Oh yeah, I can see she's playing uh, Bronzebeard's Tavern. Oh man. I have not heard of this, but I like the sound of it just from the name. Hey. No, why not? Ah, uh, well, we rescued an effigy of our sister. That counts for something. Alright, so one of the bosses we already fought. Fair enough. Yeah, I think we were in here. Yeah, this is KK's hideout. Alright, magnetic field measurements. Readings, location no change, upward trend, no reading return, possibly broken. Hmm. Here we go. What do we got here? Spirit photos, huh? Okay, photo missions tab of the missions menu has been unlocked. Oh. New. Okay. That's not good. They're not even trying to be subtle. This girl looks like she's not a local. Hope she's alright. Oh boy. Yeah, we got some creepy handsy ghosts going on here. 
So apparently we're going to have a whole new set of missions that involve tracking down locations and uh, trying to find people that were kidnapped from them or something. Anyway. Halfway through Ark Knights Chapter 11. Hey, Mirage, good to see you. Alright, so we need to find where this was taken. Which kind of looks like it might be in the scramble. Kind of hard to tell. Alright, so let's see here. Yeah, this might be the kind of quest that does not have uh, an obvious quest zone marker, and we have to find where it is. I'll take a look at the scramble real quick, and we'll see. Okay, when you're close to a spot where one of your spirit photos was taken, you'll be given the option to examine the area more closely. Taking a photo that matches the position and angle of the sample photo will reveal the source of the area's negative energy. Alright. Examine the spirit photos in your possession by checking them in the, the photo mission screen. Alright. Okay, so we have to find a photo from reference, take a photo like it, and then exercise the negative energy to get our rewards for it. Fair enough. But yeah, hope it's going alright, Mirage. Heart of Shibuya. Okay, so yeah, that almost certainly is the scramble. We'll take a look there and see if we can solve this. I'm curious. I feel like others are going to be a bit more esoteric and hard to solve. Okay, so around here somewhere. Arc 2, which I'm in, is pretty grim. Yeah, I've been hearing that a lot. They do legit get into the horrors of war and the nature of the conflict that's going on. The kind of girls run line, which, you know, had a lot of appealing character designs, but did very much get into the, no, we're serious about how awful war could be aspect of it. Okay. Let's just see if you can figure this out. I don't necessarily... I have mixed feelings about this kind of quest because it depends on whether the landmarks you're looking for are clearly visible. And this looks like it could be a bit hard to find. We'll find out. Short version is that Victoria is becoming a failed state in the grip of civil war, which goes as badly for some of the civilians as it sounds. The KMC yet hasn't yet gone full Kamarouge on it, but that's the kind of arc they're on. Oh boy! Yeah, kind of a question of whether you're going to get a little war crimes or a lot war crimes. Oh hey, so we can move while having this out. Alright, that helps. Okay... So there's a 429 advertisement on the top of a building. There's a giant pillar somewhere. So I don't think it's around here. Maybe not. Oh, I see that. We got a ghost parade there. Step off to the side. Let them pass. Here, a convenience store and a subway station. In fact, subway stations would be a good place to search for them. Oh, you know what would be a good place to check? to run up to the observation deck. Grab some roof, let's see where we go. Won't dig too deep into this, but I am curious. They're around here somewhere. There you are. Whee! We already talked to you, didn't we? Yes, that was a side quest we resolved. Let's see if we can get a bit higher up. Ah, there it is, yes. So, not quite in the ballpark of the uh, scramble, but close to it. Oh, thanks, bro. That's it. Give me the ghost money. So, probably right around... 
necessarily here. But close. Let's take another look. I think you could make an interesting game based soul. Oh no, maybe this is it. No, not quite. Yeah, I think you could make a really interesting game based on this concept where you have a big city and you don't have clear cut objective markers, but you do have to navigate based on environmental clues. And you have some degree of free roaming as you explore. But the game isn't going to explicitly say go here. I, I feel like that's something you'd have to kind of coach the player into. Kind of like if you had a a landmark system in the vein of Miyazmata, where the player uncovers visual points of reference and the map updates to keep track of them, but it's also kind of on the player to identify where they are. Okay, so I think we got to get further back. It's actually possibly down the street, maybe? Yeah, I think it's over here. You see, I, I think a game set around an urban maze that actually... Yes, here we go. This is it. Because, yeah, a game that makes full use of an urban maze could absolutely fasc be fascinating from a detective -y standpoint. Oh, hey, what's up? Done. Thank you! See? Just that easy.